Part 4. You will hear a professor of philosophy giving a talk on the ancient philosophy of Stoicism. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Ancient philosophy is not just about talking or lecturing or even reading long, dense books. In fact, it is something people have used throughout history to solve their problems and to achieve their greatest triumphs. Specifically, I am referring to Stoicism which in my opinion is the most practical of all philosophies and therefore the most appealing. Stoicism was founded in ancient Greece by Zeno of Citium in the early 3rd century BC, but was practiced by the likes of Epictetus, Cato, Seneca and Marcus Aurelius. Amazingly, we still have access to these ideas, despite the fact that the most famous Stoics never wrote anything down for publication. Cato definitely didn't. Marcus Aurelius never intended his meditations to be anything but personal. Seneca's letters were, well, letters, and Epictetus's thoughts come to us by way of a note-taking student. Stoic principles were based on the idea that its followers could have an unshakable happiness in this life, and the key to achieving this was virtue. The road to virtue, in turn, lay in understanding that destructive emotions like anger and jealousy are under our conscious control. They don't have to control us, because we can learn to control them. In the words of Epictetus, external events I cannot control but the choices I make with regard to them, I do control. The modern-day philosopher and writer Nassim Nicholas Taleb defines a Stoic as someone who has a different perspective on experiences which most of us would see as wholly negative. A Stoic transforms fear into caution, pain into transformation, mistakes into initiation, and desire into undertaking. Using this definition as a model, we can see that throughout the centuries, Stoicism has been practiced in more recent history by kings, presidents, artists, writers, and entrepreneurs. The founding fathers of the United States were inspired by the philosophy. George Washington was introduced to Stoicism by his neighbours at age 17 and later put on a play based on the life of Cato to inspire his men. Thomas Jefferson kept a copy of Seneca beside his bed. Writers and artists have also been inspired by the Stoics. Eugene Delacroix, the renowned French Romantic artist known best for his painting Liberty Leading the People, was an ardent Stoic, referring to it as his consoling religion. The economist Adam Smith's theories on capitalism were significantly influenced by the Stoicism that he studied as a schoolboy, under a teacher who had translated Marcus Aurelius's works. Today's political leaders are no different, with many finding their inspiration from the ancient texts. Former US President Bill Clinton rereads Marcus Aurelius 
every single year, and many have compared former President Obama's calm leadership style to that of Cato. Wen Jiaobao, the former Prime Minister of China, claims that Meditations is one of two books he travels with, and that he has read it more than one hundred times over the course of his life. Stoicism had a profound influence on Albert Ellis, who invented cognitive behavior therapy, which is used to help people manage their problems by changing the way that they think and behave. It's most commonly used to treat depression. The idea is that we can take control of our lives by challenging the irrational beliefs that create our faulty thinking, symptoms, and behaviors by using logic instead. Stoicism has also become popular in the world of business. Stoic principles can build the resilience and state of mind required to overcome setbacks, because Stoics teach turning obstacles into opportunity, a lesson every business entrepreneur needs to learn. I would argue that studying Stoicism is as relevant today as it was two thousand years ago, thanks to its brilliant insights. Into how to lead a good life. At the very root of the thinking, there is a very simple way of living: control what you can, and accept what you can't. This is not as easy as it sounds, and will require considerable practice. It can take a lifetime to master. The Stoics also believed the most important foundation for a good and happy life. Is not money, fame, power, or pleasure, but having a disciplined and principled character, something which seems to resonate with many people today. Ancient philosophy is not just about talking or lecturing or even reading long, dense books. In fact. It is something people have used throughout history to solve their problems and to achieve their greatest triumphs. Specifically, I am referring to Stoicism, which, in my opinion, is the most practical of all philosophies and therefore the most appealing. Stoicism was founded in ancient Greece by Zeno of Citium in the early third century BC. But was practiced by the likes of Epictetus, Cato, Seneca, and Marcus Aurelius. Amazingly, we still have access to these ideas, despite the fact that the most famous Stoics never wrote anything down for publication. Cato definitely didn't. Marcus Aurelius never intended his Meditations to be anything but personal. Seneca's letters were, well, letters, and. Epictetus's thoughts come to us by way of a note-taking student. Stoic principles were based on the idea that its followers could have an unshakable happiness in this life, and the key to achieving this was virtue. The road to virtue, in turn, lay in understanding that destructive emotions like anger and jealousy are under our conscious control. They don't have to control us, because we can learn to control them. In the words of Epictetus, external events I cannot control, but the choices I make with regard to them I do control. The modern-day philosopher and writer Nassim Nicholas Taleb defines a Stoic as someone who has a different perspective on experiences, which most of us would see as wholly negative. A stoic transforms fear into caution, pain into transformation, mistakes into initiation, and desire into undertaking. Using this definition as a model, we can see that throughout the centuries, stoicism has been practiced in more recent history by kings, presidents, artists, writers, and entrepreneurs. The founding fathers of the United States were inspired by the philosophy. George Washington was introduced to Stoicism 
by his neighbours at age 17, and later put on a play based on the life of Cato to inspire his men. Thomas Jefferson kept a copy of Seneca beside his bed. Writers and artists have also been inspired by the Stoics. Eugene Delacroix, the renowned French Romantic artist known best for his painting Liberty Leading the People, was an ardent Stoic, referring to it as his consoling religion. The economist Adam Smith's theories on capitalism were significantly influenced by the Stoicism that he studied as a schoolboy under a teacher who had translated Marcus Aurelius's works. Today's political leaders are no different, with many finding their inspiration from the ancient texts. Former US President Bill Clinton rereads Marcus Aurelius every single year, and many have compared former President Obama's calm leadership style to that of Cato. Wen Jiaobao, the former Prime Minister of China, claims that Meditations is one of two books he travels with and that he has read it more than 100 times over the course of his life. Stoicism had a profound influence on Albert Ellis, who invented cognitive behaviour therapy, which is used to help people manage their problems by changing the way that they think and behave. It's most commonly used to treat depression. The idea is that we can take control of our lives by challenging the irrational beliefs that create our faulty thinking, symptoms and behaviours by using logic instead. Stoicism has also become popular in the world of business. Stoic principles can build the resilience and state of mind required to overcome setbacks because Stoics teach turning obstacles into opportunity. A lesson every business entrepreneur needs to learn. I would argue that studying Stoicism is as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago, thanks to its brilliant insights into how to lead a good life. At the very root of the thinking, there is a very simple way of living. Control what you can and accept what you can't. This is not as easy as it sounds and will require considerable practice. It can take a lifetime to master. The Stoics also believed the most important foundation for a good and happy life is not money, fame, power or pleasure, but having a disciplined and principled character, something which seems to resonate with many people today. Background. If you're preparing to take the IELTS test, you're not alone. Over 2 million people all over the world take the test each year. A knowledge of English is increasingly important for people who want to enter the higher education or work in countries where English is the first language. And IELTS is widely recognized by universities and colleges professional bodies, employers, immigration authorities, and other government agencies. Academic and general training tests. There are two versions of IELTS, academic and general training or GT. When you enroll, you can choose which version you want to take. You should take IELTS academic if you want to study in higher education. For example, on an undergraduate, or postgraduate course at a university where the teaching is in English. You should take the general training version if you intend to live and work in an English-speaking country and need to show the migration authorities that you have the required level of English. Your teacher can advise you on the version which is appropriate for you, or you can contact the organization you intend to apply to and find out which one they require. The test. There are four parts to the test, listening, reading, writing and speaking, and you must take them all. The total test time is two hours and 45 minutes. The tests of listening and speaking are the same for all candidates, but the tests of reading and writing are different depending on whether you chose the academic 
or general versions. You do the listening, reading and writing tests on the same day, and usually the speaking test is done a few days before or after the other components. Scoring IELTS assesses your language knowledge and skills and gives you a band score from 1 to 9 in each of the four parts of the test, and also an overall band score from 1 to 9 for the whole exam, which is an average of the scores for each part. There is no pass or fail in IELTS because the college, university, or organization you're applying to will tell you the band score you need to achieve. IELTS Band Scores Band 9, Expert User Has fully operational command of the language. Appropriate, accurate and fluent with complete understanding. Band 8, Very Good User Has fully operational command of the language with only occasional unsystematic inaccuracies and inappropriancies. Misunderstandings may occur in unfamiliar situations. Handles complex detailed argumentation well. Band 7, Good User. Has operational command of the language, though with occasional inaccuracies, inappropriaces, and misunderstandings in some situations. Generally handles complex language well and understands detailed reasoning. Band 6, Competent User has generally effective command of the language despite some inaccuracies, inappropriaces, and misunderstandings. Can use and understand fairly complex language, particularly in familiar situations. Band 5, Modest User has partial command of the language, coping with overall meaning in most situations, though is likely to make many mistakes should be able to handle basic communication in own field. Band 4, Limited User Basic competence is limited to familiar situations. Has frequent problems in understanding and expression. Is not able to use complex language. Band 3, Extremely Limited User conveys and understands only general meaning in very familiar situations. Frequent breakdowns in communication occur. Band 2, Intermittent User No real communication is possible except for the most basic information using isolated words or short formulae in familiar situations and to meet immediate needs. Has great difficulty understanding spoken and written English. Band 1, Non-User Essentially has no ability to use the language beyond possibly a few isolated words. Band 0, did not attempt the test no accessible information provided.